Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. If you hear a cat meowing, that's Grigio, who is chilling with me today and the window is open as well so that Grigio can be looking outside. So if you hear some wind, I hope you don't mind it. The cat is having a good time. Today we're gonna be covering a topic that is very often requested, which is how to add film grain. And it's such a repetitive, but generally speaking, quite easy process that I thought, let's make an After Effects project file called Grain Control. And it's available for free on the ArtStation store. It will soon be available for free, probably on some other platform as well. And it's very easy for you to just drag your footage in here and add your grain, whichever grain assets that you're using. And you'll be able to control the intensity quite simply. Cool, let's get into it. So once you've opened your grain control project file, there are basically three compositions to look out for. There is the add grain, the drag footage in here, and the final comp grain. The final comp grain is really your final composition from which you could navigate to any of the other pre-comps in which you have to do some things. I'm using this cool portrait shot from this beautiful girl from artgrid.io. We are not sponsored by Artgrid, I just happen to have a subscription for it, so I guess we're using that. Plus, it's just very easy footage to, to work with when it comes to adding grain. Down here in the final comp grain, there are three layers, three pre-comps. The top one is called Select Me. If you select it and go to the effects panel, you'll see what's happening here. We have a tint effect that I called Luma Channel, which is basically turning the footage into black and white. And then we have a levels effect, which I called Grain Control, in which we can drag these sliders to control the intensity of the grain. Down here, you can see the second pre-comp is called Grain, in which you can double click and just add the grain assets that you're using. Don't change the blending mode, just keep them to normal as the grain layer is automatically already set to soft light. This grain layer is then set to luma mat in the track mat onto the select me layer, which really is nothing more than a duplicate of the bottom pre-comp, but with the black and white and grain control effects added on top. The bottom layer is just a pre-comp with the footage. You drag your footage in here and you drag your grain in here and then everything should be ready to go. The only thing you then have to do is click on the select me and then drag the white slider inwards to create a luma mask that has more white areas allowing more of the grain to be visible on most of the footage or you could do the opposite and you could shrink the amount of grain by making the image darker. You could also just make a much harsher defined line of where the grain is. It's easy if you basically turn on that luma mask and you'll be able to see where it is exactly that you are applying the grain and how much of that grain you are applying at each of these areas. For example, the settings we have over here, you can see that once we start moving into her more highlighty area, that's where the grain starts becoming more prevalent. To get a smoother result, just make sure that the distance between the total left input black and the white input is distant enough so that there is a smooth gradient. What you can do now to make this footage look more interesting or more complete is in between the footage and the grain layer, you can start adding all of your effects. So you can go and create an adjustment layer, let's call that color grading, and you could just go in here and let's start off by getting a bit more of a punch. There, the very subtle exposure effect. A very subtle luminance effect. Now I'm going to use a tritone effect to give this a bit more of a filmic look. And then by increasing the blend with original, you can find the perfect middle ground for your footage. You don't want her to look sick. You want her to be just affected by the film processing. Something like this.
another thing you could do is I'm duplicating the footage. I'm going to move this to the top of the stack and I am going to be applying a few effects to it. First of all, I've added a Gaussian blur effect, which I will now crunch down with an exposure effect. There we go. And now I will be adding a tint effect to get a black and white luma from this blurry version. Now we can create a new adjustment layer that then luma masks and references that blue main glare layer. So if I luma this, I'm going to call this highlight correction. I'm going to be increasing the vibrance a little bit to get to about 50. And then I'm going to be adding an additional tritone effect with a little bit of a pinkish haze there you go that kind of a look and then the midtones can just be simply gray and we're gonna be blending this with the original until we get somewhere that feels a bit more natural somewhere about here And there you go, that's basically it. So you drag your footage into the back slot, you make sure you add your grain inside of your grain slot, and then after that it's really just about your personal preference. How strong do you want your grain to be, How, in which areas do you want your grain to be affected. You can also make sure your grain is not affected in the highlights and only works in the shadows by just simply adding a invert map here or just swapping the colors in the Luma channel. If you swap that, you'll see the entire levels graph has flipped and you can then, you, you kind of have to think about it and then reverse at that point, but you could, you could, as you can see, eliminate the grain from the highlight areas and especially focus the grain on the shadowy areas. I'd say it's just very important for you to, whenever you're making or emulating a film stock, to have a pretty strong reference of what it is that you're doing. Know the film stock that you want to emulate and really spend a few moments to look at the details. Look at the highlight color, make sure where the grain is affected and then I'm sure you'll be fine. So this is the final result with and without grain. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all of you who have been sticking around to the Blau Films channel. Thanks so much for checking out the videos and being such a supportive community. And I've been loving to talk to you whenever like someone leaves a comment or whenever someone sends me a message. And uh, it's been great. And I really feel like this seems to be working. So yeah, we're going to keep on making tutorials. We're going to keep on finishing our work and uh, sharing our process. So be sure to subscribe. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Have a good day. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.